The Vozon are a reclusive monastic race whose draconian and fanatical views on morality seemingly put most if not all others to shame in the Metroid universe. Their zealous warriors suffer through at least five levels of combat training, as detailed by the Vozon Codex, their holy text for such discipline. Those who complete the fifth level of training are granted the Judicator, a weapon of supercooled plasma that has the ability to freeze the wielder's opponents. One such warrior is Noxus, one of the bounty hunters whom Samus encountered in the events of Metroid Prime Hunters, and whom the Vozon sent to enforce their sense of justice and prevent the rumored ultimate power from falling into the wrong hands. The Vozon also have exoskeleton-like skin with exceptional insulating properties, and can morph into spinning tops. Both these attributes come in handy as their homeworld, Vo, is a glacier world whose landscapes are constantly covered in ice. That is all that is truly known about the Vozon, but what if, perhaps, there is more between the lines regarding them than initially supposed? For instance, when we consider the unforgiving standards the Vozon set for themselves and their devotion to bringing justice upon evildoers, one can't help being reminded of the space pirates, who would certainly not only be the most wanted in the eyes of the Vozon, but also are seemingly the Vozon's polar opposites, no pun intended. In fact, when we take a closer look at the Vozon anatomy and design, there are strange similarities between them and the space pirates. The digitigrade-like legs, for instance, are not dissimilar to that of the majority of the space pirate designs. While not making use of energy scythes like many space pirate troopers, the Vozon still conceal their free arms in the Vosythe, a blade weapon, similar to the material blades used by the Aether pirate troopers, that they use most often while utilizing their warming, spinning maneuver. Lastly, the Vozon arm cannon sports a pair of fins on the underside that is very reminiscent of many space pirate vessel designs. Now, despite the similarities, the Vozon are still dissimilar enough to be their own species, and this, of course, would likely be partly a result of the Vozon adapting to the harshness of the planet Vo. But by making this point, I am, of course, also making the claim that the Vozon and the space pirates were once one and the same species. Species, but became distinct from one another through various adaptations and genetic engineering per pirate experimentation. Now before anyone mentions it's simply not enough time for such physiological changes to take place, it should be noted that the space pirates themselves have a masochistic obsession with self-inflicted mutation and adaptation, to the point that the term space pirate has itself become a species term. Ergo, it is very possible that the Vozon with their adaptation to Vo, and the space pirates and their self-experimentation, were once the same species. Further, it is here I want to draw attention to the name of their race. The name Vozon looks and sounds strangely similar to Phazon, the highly radioactive substance with extraordinarily mutagenic properties. This may suggest, as a desperate attempt to separate from the space pirates, the Vozon also used Phazon to help accelerate their adaptation to harsh environments, and used it further to energize their powerful weaponry. This seems supported by the fact the Judicator's icon appears to have a radioactive symbol within it. The timing of the Vozon's debut in the Metroid timeline also roughly coincides with the beginning of the space pirates' Phazon experimentation, so it is certainly possible the Vozon could have gotten their hands on Phazon as well. With, therefore, their new homeworld and refuge, Vo, and the substance used to adapt to it, Phazon, they then named their new people by combining the names of both, Vozon. This then of course begs the question, why did such a separation within the species take place? Well, it should be noted that one typically does not take on an extreme discipline unless it is to counter another behavioral pattern, nor does a group of sentient creatures become reclusive and monastic unless they are secluding themselves from something, such as a society or faction whose ways are deemed evil and or self-destructive. 
In this case, a group within the Space Pirate faction grew convicted from the brutality of their Confederates' actions, whose cruelty may have dramatically worsened under Ridley's leadership. There are, therefore, two possibilities for how such a separation played out. A. Civil war broke out within the Space Pirate faction, eventually resulting in a stalemate of sorts, or alternatively, B. The seceders made their quiet getaway and fled to Vo, similar to the Rebel Alliance retreating to the ice world of Hoth in The Empire Strikes Back. Once a foothold on the planet was established, this new faction, the Vozon, created a new separatist society dedicated to everything the space pirates were not. But why Vo? Why an icy world constantly covered in ice? Well, for one, as they say in real estate, location, location, location. Given Vo's location, which is described as being in the outer rim of the galaxy, and given the pirate homeworld being described as in an unknown solar system, thereby suggesting a remote location, it is possible that Vo is directly opposite of the pirate homeworld, which would make sense given the fleeing Vozon would seek to relocate as far from the space pirates as possible. Further, similar to Hoth, a glacier planet would be an ideal place to hide until recuperation can occur. There is, however, another reason an icy world would be in the Vozon's best interests. One of the Space Pirates' favorite habits is the cloning and use of Metroids as bioweapons, and Metroids have one weakness, the cold. Pirate logs on Talon 4 detailed a significant decrease in Metroid aggression in frigid environments such as Fendrana Drifts, and they are thereby further weakened by said environments, so their use on Vo would not prove very effective. To make matters worse, this would also explain the Vozon's sacred weapon, the Judicator, as it is a weapon that freezes its targets. Interestingly, the Judicator's freezing blast is only effective at point-blank range, suggesting its intended use was against an enemy whose attacks were also short-ranged, such as a Metroid, and the fact the blast completely surrounds the wielder makes it effective against a Metroid attempting to latch on from behind. Before I wrap up, I would like to make a couple of side notes that are rather curious coincidences and to some degree further cement the connection between the Vozon and the Space Pirates. For one, there is already another known monastic order connected to the Space Pirates known as the Monks of Grondheim. While not much is known about this group, what is known is that the Space Pirates deal in commerce with them, exchanging mine crystals the monks value for unknown goods in return. Interestingly, the portion of the Alembic Prophecy that relates to the Judicator and therefore the Vozon is distinguished by the phrase Violet Crystal. For another, it is worth noting that the Hunter displayed immediately after the Space Pirate Weevil is, in fact, Noxus the Vozon. In conclusion, it is very possible, if not probable, that the Vozon are in fact a separatist faction that seceded from the Space Pirates and made for themselves an anti-piracy and immorality manifesto, albeit one of extremity. If this is indeed the case, then it seems strange that the Vozon would largely choose seclusion among the stars rather than combining forces with the Galactic Federation in their hopes of snuffing out the Space Pirates once and for all. Unless, of course, their condescension and wariness of others go so far as to deem even the Federation unworthy of their assistance. This would surely be the reason the Vozon have only made an appearance in Metroid Prime Hunters, as perhaps the one thing worthy of their attention and ergo action would be the rumor of ultimate power, and so they sent Noxus to ensure that such a thing would not fall into the wrong hands. If, however, the Vozon's choice in weaponry and environment are indeed linked to the Space Pirates and their use of Metroids as bioweapons, then there is still room for the Vozon to make an appearance in Metroid Prime 4. Allow me to explain. There is little doubt that Silex will serve as the primary antagonist, but that doesn't quite explain what we can expect for secondary antagonists. Or does it? 
Prime 4 is likely to occur chronologically right before the events of Samus Returns, the premise of which is the Galactic Federation deeming the Metroid race too dangerous to exist. Such a grave declaration did not occur at any point in the Prime Trilogy, in which the horrid merging of Metroids and Phazon created such terrible abominations, even one such as Dark Samus herself. What may warrant such a decree, however, is whatever diabolical plan Silex has in store using the Metroid he stole from the Federation facility. If this is indeed the case, then such an event would surely grab the attention of the Boson once more, who would then have to make a decision whether they choose their solitude over the fate of the galaxy, or take action instead.